So today we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri and Bunurong peoples of the Kulin Nation. We respect the custodianship of these first peoples, their unceded sovereignty, and we honour their elders past, present and emerging. For our worship this morning, we're, we're going to be um, uh, led in prayer by Annika. We're having a reading in Fijian from uh, Duncan Turava, and uh, Andrea Mays is going to reflect on this re reading. But we're going to begin with a video, uh, a prayer for Moana, which is the ocean, written and read by the most reverend Archbishop Winston Halapua of the Diocese of Polynesia of the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and produced by the Reverend James Bagwan, Secretary for Communication and Overseas Mission of the Methodist Church in Fiji, and Chaplain Trustee of the traditional voyaging canoe, the Utu Ni Yalu. The prayer relates to climate change and care for the ocean. Loving and embracing God, you are God of the universe and all creation. You create and give life and see that your creation is good. We praise you for your gift of the Moana, which covers most of the surface of your planet Earth. We thank you for the oceans of the world. We thank you for the flowing of the oceans into one another and around the continents and islands. We thank you for the life-giving of the oceans, for the oxygen, food and resources they continually provide. We thank you that the ocean is home for most species, small and great. We are people of the Moana. Our ancestors navigated by the stars and crossed the waves to find new homes. The voice of waves breaking on the reef speaks of your constancy and your love and your care for creation. May we hear the cries of sea creatures endangered by the selfish greed of humanity. May there be deep listening to the voice of waters rising to and calf land. May ears be open to the groaning caused by refusal to honour creation. May ears be open to suffering caused by a love of power which destroys. We beat a loud drum alerting people around the world to the danger of climate change which threatens nature and human life. We blow a cons calling for the worship of a life-giving God of immense goodness. Our forebears set out across the ocean. We set out on a venture to protect our home, the planet Earth. Help us to challenge short-sighted greed. Help us to address unjust structures and practices and to change our relationship with creation to one of care. We affirm our guardianship of the precious gift of creation. We have a vision, we have courage, we have your guidance. 
we have the presence of the risen one whose power to love is greater than all the power of destruction. Grant that together we may bring peace to our planet Earth, to its many creatures and its many people. We lot to, in the name of our God, Creator, Redeemer and Life-Giving Spirit. Amen. Sangai biu tena bonoa koya kuchisu kalako kina ya se asa baka taia kei saitoni asa zuru kina dona wale ka senga ni bina kake indua ekila ya sa senga nga ni rau ni tiko buni ekia asa rongo dona kene tuku tuku indona lewa kavuru maya ni bela bela kina tiko na lube na lewa sangai lako na lewa oya kina bonoa kavuru ewana. Anga akai matri tu tani na leo ngo kasa sudo na yasa yasa baka finisia mai siria kasa anga iba kama suti chisu me baka sabwa tani na tevoro mai bua na lube na leo kasa anga kai bua ko chisu me liu tau manda na nonra iba wakani na ngone sa senga sa ndondo nu me tauri na kena na ngone kaviri takiani weir na kuli asa sau mana leo ko kaya san Tina saka ngori. Iyo ira na koli, e na ruku ni teveli, e na kania, na iwovo ni kenda na ngone. Sangai kaya wako chisu, e na wugu ni woso ngori, mole su tale ki wale. Ona laki kunea ni sambiuta na luwe muna tevoro. Sangai lako na elewa kina na wale, karaitha na luwe na nindavo koto, e na indavo ndavo. Ka sambiuti koya, waka indina na tevoro. Sangai biu tena ya saya sabuk taia ku cisu belaku kali li en salah wak bukaki saya Tony kena be koretini yang gay kau temai buai dona tematan dindi wara kandeng red tuni wasa kara kere koy me tambaki koy lingana ian esa kau ti koy tani bukak tiki tiki mai be nale wungu ku cisu setaran dalingan ruo ruo ane nolai ganggalo kakasi bi kataran emena sangai tuva kilo malangin ebu tungu na loa na kakawa e fatha. Sangai rongo sara rao na ndalingana katasera na emena. Kasamadhala na na vosa. Sangai waka roti iru ko chisu, mera kaku ni tukune poa, endua na tamata. Ia na kena levu nga ni nona waka tambuya, na kena levu tali nga ni nona rwei tukunyaka. Dar sa kurumbuya waka levu sara ko ira kede nga ira sara ronga kakaya. Na ka kede sara e dhakawa e dhaka waka binaka. Sambo mai rongo rao na dindi vara. Kasa vosa na ngalu ena nona thakadhaka. This is the word of the Lord. Ngo saga na vosa, Nicolo. When I think about how Jesus was kind to people who were poor and outcast, and then I read Mark 7, I'm shocked by Jesus' words to the Syrophoenician woman. Perhaps you are too. How can Jesus say, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs? It is racist to compare any group of people to dogs. This is a moment when Jesus is fully human and is expressing a common prejudice at that time. Jesus is also expressing his sense of missional priority to focus on the Jewish people. We live in a world where racism still exists, where rich countries ensure their needs are met before giving resources to poor countries, where humanity meets its selfish greed 
and endangered sea creatures and the whole creation through climate change and over harvesting. There are many unfair structures that perpetuate injustice and environmental problems. In the Christian tradition, the Syrophoenician woman is called Justa, meaning the just one. Justa confronts Jesus. She argues with him. She opens Jesus' mind to seeing things differently to ministering to non-Jewish people and even animals. When Jesus talks about taking the children's food and throwing it to the dogs, he seems to be picturing the dogs as outside the house. When Justa talks about how the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs, she's creating a different picture a picture of a home where animals are pets and children share their food with the pets. In this sort of home, animals are looked after and everyone is welcome at the table. It is a just home for all. In this picture, our relationship with creation changes so that we bring peace to many creatures and people. Jesus responds to Justa and affirms what she has said. As a result of what she said, she can go because her daughter has been healed. In the version of this story told in Matthew, Jesus says, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Jesus heard what she said and changed his attitude as he continued to move through the Gentile region of Tyre. He heals a deaf man and goes on to miraculously feed 4,000 people, most of whom were probably Gentiles. He changes his understanding and shares the children's bread with everyone. Like Jesus, we have people who speak up in the face of racism, greed, and unjust practices. Wouldn't it be great if we can respond to these people in the way that Jesus does, to affirm their words and their vision of a just world where everyone, including plants and animals, have enough to live on, to share our resources, to change our attitudes and actions so that they are more just and healing can take place. I love the physical way in which Jesus heals the deaf man. Jesus takes care to communicate with him in an appropriate way, putting his fingers in the man's ears so he knew Jesus was praying for his healing to be restored. Jesus put spit on the man's tongue as a sign of Jesus' power being used to heal his speech. Jesus looks up to heaven as a sign of praying to God. He sighs and then says, Ephephetha, which is Aramaic for be opened. There are times when we can be deaf too or struggle to speak about the key issues of our time, such as climate change. In the Pacific prayer we heard earlier, it was asked that ears be opened to the groaning caused by refusal to honour creation. May ears be opened to suffering caused by a love of power which destroys. At this time, and in the season of creation, I hope that our ears will be opened to hear a theological vision of a just world for all, as well as to understand the causes of our current environmental problems. I hope that our tongues will be freed up to talk about the many ways we can work together to address these problems and make a better future for all of us. 
there are so many things we can do, ranging from tree planting and using renewable energy to asking the government to change its policies on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and everything in between. If we want to be involved in the solution, there are so many opportunities. We just need to be open to listen, learn and speak up. As we um, come to our prayer, um, everybody's been invited to uh, bring a bowl, but you may have missed that and that's fine. You can also imagine a bowl in your head. It can be a special bowl or something that's ordinary that just comes to hand. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, my bowl is a special prayer bowl and um, it's also a, um, a bowl designed to make bread rise. And in that way, it refers to Jesus, the bread of life, growing in and amongst our prayers as we turn to God. So you may want to hold your bowl or keep it um, within reach or picture it in your minds as we pray. Let us pray. Loving and embracing God, we have gathered here this morning as followers of Jesus Christ, longing to follow in his footsteps and live out the gospel in our presbytery together. We hear the challenge put to us this morning through story, reflection and prayer to open our ears and our minds and our hearts and to change our ways to ones that are more sustainable for the planet and bring justice and peace, inclusion and healing to all of creation. Creator, redeemer and life-giving spirit, we pray that you open our hearts and minds and guide us to where you are longing for us to go and play our part. And as we take that bowl or basket, or picture it in our mind. Let us imagine ourselves filling it with our good intentions and commitment to give shape to Christ's way in our lives and our communities. Let us also bring to mind the many gifts we have received and the abundance we have to share from in gratitude and with thanksgiving. And I invite you to picture one or two things that will bring a smile to your face right now. Treasure for us to savor. And add that into your basket that's already holding your commitment. Now with positive commitment and gratitude for those good things that are part of our lives and that bring us energy and joy, let us turn to other things we are holding and carrying also. Tiredness or anxiety perhaps, grief or the heaviness of despair, worry about the future, uncertainty caused by the pandemic, Items on the news telling us of violence and war, injustice and a threat to peace. The unmet needs of so many in quantities that may seem too overwhelming to deal with at times. These too are things we hold and are part of our lives. Let us put those in our baskets as well imagining them finding a place in and amongst our commitment to make a difference where we can, and our gratitude and joy for the goodness and grace we have also received. A basket, a bowl, full of life, with all the contradictory emotions that are part of it. 
joy and grief living side by side. Powerful and energizing experiences together with what drains and hampers us. And let us imagine us now offering that bowl to God, placing it in the everlasting arms that are around us and all things, carrying us with love, energizing us with the spirit, holding us together here, now and ever. Amen. <laughs>